because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. Hey, welcome. Welcome, everyone, I think, to our 10th episode of Modern Mystics. And and uh, looks like it's going to be a weekly show now. And today, I think it looks like we're going to be talking about uh, sex, lack, needs, sacrifice, specialness, a lot of really, really good stuff today. And um, yeah, I just, I think yesterday I... I was so, I was, you know, I was praying, okay, tell me, what am I going to, what are we going to talk about on the show? What am I going to talk about? What is Nicholas going to talk about? And uh, I was pretty blank, like nothing, like there was nothing there. I was like, okay, I really have to trust that whatever it is, it's going to come in. And, and then this morning I just woke up and I just, illusion of needs, illusion of needs, like it just kept coming in really strong. Mm. So I think I might start off by reading some of that. Actually, so, yeah. Okay, this is uh this is the first chapter of the course actually, and it's the section illusion of needs, and you can probably follow along down below in the chat. Okay, so the illusion of needs. You who want peace can find it only by complete forgiveness. No learning is acquired by anyone unless he wants to learn it and believes in some way that he needs it. While lack does not exist in the creation of God, it is very apparent in what you have made. It is, in fact, the essential difference between them. Lack implies that you would be better off in a state somehow different from the one you are in. Until the separation, which is the meaning of the fall, nothing was lacking. There were no needs at all. Needs arise only when you deprive yourself. You act according to the particular order of needs you establish. This in turn depends on your perception of what you are. So, in this world, we all think we're human beings. And so that determines the order of needs that we think we, are, that we, think we have. Hmm. And so, you know, there seems to be so many appetites as a human being. There's like, you know, there's uh, sex cravings, there's food, you get hungry, you get thirsty and all these sleepy. different, yeah, you get sleepy and all these different needs, right? And um, so basically it's like, I remember David was talking about how it's like the miracle impulse is coming in as this pure beam of light straight into the mind. And actually, it's not straight into the mind, because seemingly there's this filter of lack that it passes through, which is this filter of specialness. It's the Mm. ego. So it's like God's always calling us back home. And there's this filter that that call seems to go in because we believe in the ego. So there's this filter, this belief in lack, this belief in separation, this ego, Mm. this specialness. And so that call goes through that filter and then it gets distorted. And then because, you know, the ego doesn't want us to really see that, that pure impulse. So it gets distorted and split up into all these different (laughs) other needs and appetites like, Oh, um, I'm horny or, Oh, I'm hungry or I want this or I want that. Or um, I want a new car, whatever it might be. It's all a distortion of God calling us home. Hmm. And it just splits up into all those different distortions of miracle impulses, which is another section in the mm. course that let me see if anything comes to me right away to to read um yeah so so the next section right after uh illusion of needs is distortions of miracle impulses, and it says your your distorted perceptions produce a dense cover over miracle impulses 
making it hard for them to reach your own awareness. The confusion of miracle impulses with physical impulses is a major perceptual distortion. Physical impulses are misdirected miracle impulses. All real pleasure comes from doing God's will. Mm. This is because not doing it is a denial of self. Denial of self results in illusions, while correction of the error brings release from it. Do not deceive yourself into believing that you can relate in peace to God or to your brothers with anything external. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because actually yesterday we felt to do a Facebook Live just letting everyone know, oh, we're having a weekly show now. And I, I remember at one point, one of us, maybe it was myself, we started talking about how like the more we keep you know, following the guidance, kind of going deeper within in this awakening process, the more uh, like the the difference between pleasure and pain becomes more obvious. And I just felt like what you just read, like all real pleasure comes from doing God's will because a denial of that is like a denial of yourself. It's like the more we keep kind of going deeper within we start seeing like who we truly are and we start seeing actually what is painful because as jesus says if you this is more of a paraphrase because i don't know how he exactly says in the course but he says if you knew the difference between pleasure and pain you would never experience pain again and yet all of us like i feel pain all the time like what is what's he talking about and that's just how deep this this I want to say minutia or this like this uh, haze in our mind is that we can't actually tell the difference between pleasure and pain. We can't tell that actually going for specialness, trying to seek out lack, trying to prove ourselves, all that is pain. And yet there's this whole section of like the world. And we were big into that as well of self-improvement where, you know, we read all these books. We think, Oh, I'm lacking in this area of my life or this part of my mind and everything. So I need to fix that. There's always this trying to fix it personally. And yet Jesus or the spirit or the guide within is just saying like, no, come to me. There's actually nothing wrong except your perception. You just need to hand it over to me and I will guide you out of this. You know, if you follow my will, which is actually your will, you will come into actual joy and you will come into see the difference between pleasure and pain. Yeah, because I think we talked a little bit about this on the last show, but ultimately we need to come into a consistent experience that the world is only reflecting your mind. Hmm. So it's like if there's lack inside, inside the mind, if there's a belief in lack that's being upheld and reinforced all the time, then then what are you going to experience? You're going to experience lack. And then the reflections are going to be lack as well. And there's never going to be a real solution in the reflection. Because think about it. It makes no sense. It's like like within the mind, let's take the movie analogy, right? So like the movie projector, it's like, let's say there's a corrupted um, file inside of the projector. And then it's projecting the movie on the screen. And then there's weird glitches on the, in the, you're watching the movie in the movie theater and there's weird glitches on the screen. And then everyone in the theater is like, what's going on? And then they go up to the screen and they start like, like tearing at the screen and like, what are these glitches, you know, but obviously it's coming from inside the projector. And so you can't solve it by like pounding on this screen or trying to change the screen because the problem's not there it's only reflecting where the problem is and the problems within the mind so it's like that's really where we need to go we need to go inside the mind and question all the beliefs and question the belief in lack and look at all the ego deceptions and really get back to this like i am the world and the world is me like that's Mm. i think i was saying last last show it's like that's the one lesson we need to learn is that there is no world outside of myself and then it's over and and the ego is going to pull all these tricks non-stop with us you know and um because it doesn't want us to see that so 
Yeah, we've been encountering a lot of that this week. It's like since we've had this prayer, I was sharing on the live as well, but, you know, for me, like the prayer has been really not wanting to prove myself and like, I just want to be, you know, I just, I don't want to try to get the things I think I need and I don't, yeah, this is, I just keep hearing in my mind, I don't want to have to prove myself. Like my worth is established by God, not by anything I say, do, or think. And that's been my real prayer. And since we've had kind of a similar prayer, actually our healing has been very similar. Andy and I, we've just been like, whoa, that's so cool. Um, since we've had like this prayer really up in our mind, it's really been flushing all the areas of our life, uh, you know, especially me, I've just been seeing all the, where the specialness is coming in, the desires for it. Like, oh, I, I want everyone to like me. I don't really care if anyone likes Andy, but I want everyone to like me. I want all the attention to come to me. And, uh, you know, just seeing everywhere that plays out. Um, and then even the competition where, again, the same thing of like, oh, I need to maybe be this way so that you know, the love comes towards me, just, it's been really like much more evident in my mind. Uh, and yet just really staying with it, not, not making it wrong, not kind of judging it. Cause that, that just gets stuck. So it's just been really watching it in my mind and then just really paying attention. Like, how does this feel when I'm, when I'm in that state of mind, like, what are my reflections when I'm in that state of mind? <laughs> Is it actually giving me what I think I want? And, and just really seeing, is this valuable based on how I feel? Like Jesus says, that's the one right use of judgment. How do you feel? You know, that's how you start to discern. That's how, whether you think you're seemingly, because it's not ever true, above your brother or sister or below them, pay attention to how it feels on both sides. Cause the more you actually look at it in your mind, the more I've been looking at it, the more I start to feel that it's like, it doesn't feel right. It's like, okay, when I'm below that, that definitely feels painful like that I'm aware of. But when I'm above, there's like this little trick playing out where, you know, when I'm perceiving I'm like above or better than my brothers or, or something like that, there's a trick where it seems to feel good. But the more I look at it, the more I actually, there's like a discomfort in my heart. And so the more I see that, the more I'm, I'm seeing that actually it's two sides of the same coin. And as long as I hold uh, like a hierarchy of illusions that, oh, it's better to be better, I'm keeping both sides of it. I'm keeping pain. There's actually no joy in that. And it's just, it's actually seeing this real equality and, and all and our brothers. And it's like, well, how do we come to that? Well, my experience has been, and I feel you've had this experience too, where by like kind of praying, listening, following, following, what would you have me do? Like love and do what you will. In that service to the spirit, it really starts to wash away all these differences, you know, because as you're guided to support your brothers or, you know, support what's most helpful, it's like all the preferences start to get washed away. All the, uh, the ideas of differences of like, you know, whether you're supporting or being supported, just that kind of back and forth in the healing, it, it just washes it all away. And you get this authentic experience, this effortless experience. You start to get it more. That's been my, that's been my experience where it just it, like everything evens out in your mind. And there's not actually this desire to, prove yourself as you start to feel the love within from that flow of service it's like all these limiting beliefs and these defense mechanisms in the mind of thinking you need to be better thinking whatever even that means it can play out in all aspects of life whether it's in in a job or in spiritual community oh who cleaned up the cables better <laughs> whatever it is or who's expressing better you know or who cried more? I've seen all these thoughts in my mind. Oh, I cried more today. I, I'm doing quite well. <laughs> I'm doing better than Andy. He hasn't cried yet. So <laughs> whatever it is, you know, it's just, it's just starting to see it all. Cause before there was like this, you know, it's always been this low level of pain and I couldn't tell actually when I was playing out all these things competitively. And it's just the more I've gotten aware of like the true joy, the more it's, 
it's shown in my mind where, yeah, like somehow it was just like there was a cloud in my mind. I couldn't see that, oh, because I'm maybe crying more, I think I'm better. Just as one example. You know, I couldn't see that before that, oh, I've actually started to like see a difference that I'm even this body, you're that body, and I need to be unique to be loved and, you know, all these differences. So. Yeah. The ego needs the competition to perceive differences to keep itself alive. Yeah. Because if you see that you really are your brother, then it's like, you know, it just wipes out the ego. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the ego needs something to like be like, I'm this, you're that. You know, it comes back to there's there's two you know there's the external there's i'm this and you're that you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. so it needs something like that to keep surviving it needs your mind energy to go in that direction to keep feeding it you know it's like this leech that's like stuck <laughs> stuck to your mind that's like sucking all your energy but you don't have to keep feeding it you know it's like we have a choice where is my mind energy going to go towards? Is it going to go towards this leech that's stuck? That, that's not even actually there, but the, I think it's there. So I'm feeding it. Or is it going to go towards the Holy Spirit going to go towards spirit for awakening? So it's like we have this decision. And I, today's calendar lesson is actually like on my decision, all salvation rests. So yeah, yeah, it's really beautiful. But I did want to talk about too going back to the illusion of needs and yeah it's like you know the specialness it shows up in different ways for each person like um some people might feel like oh food is a really big thing for me like I remember in high school I, I would <laughs> you know kind of I kind of found found out that a lot of girls they were like daydreaming about food during class and then a lot of guys would be daydreaming about sex so it's like, I just, I don't know, I just found that interesting. But it's like, yeah, it's these fantasies that keep our mind stuck to that leech. But even it's, it's funny to notice, it's like these things that the ego tells us are going to bring completion. It's like, you can, I mean, you can experiment and find out, like, is it going to work? Because like, I had this like beautiful girl, girlfriend and in high school, you know, and hmm. And it's like, for me, the specialness was mostly in this whole sex thing. So it's like, okay, beautiful girlfriend, whatever, we would have sex. And then it's like, okay, okay, you have sex. And then, then what? Are you complete? Is it over? Did the world disappear? You're full and whole and abundant and back with God. It's like, no, it didn't work. Okay. Uh, maybe try again <laughs> try again yeah it's like, maybe next it's time like, uh, yeah then you go along your day and okay maybe you feel a little bit better after that you go along your day and then next thing you know oh shit i feel i feel this lack again i need something to fill it up food whatever maybe it's sex again you go and you go and you have sex again it's like did it work <laughs> it's like no it's like 100 more times did it work no, it's like, okay, so how long are we going to keep uh, falling into the ego's trap? You know, there has to be, there must be another way. Same with food. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, whatever the ego tries to trick you with, it's just like, see the thoughts. It's like, oh, this will, this will help. And then you try and maybe the ego will be like, oh yeah, it did help. But then like five minutes later, it's like back to the same thing. So it's like, we're worthy of more consistent happiness you know we're worthy to be like consistently happy and consistently full and abundant we don't have to keep going from scraps of nothing to scraps of nothing to scraps and maintaining this lack so i think the journey is really about questioning all of these values and these beliefs like like is this really helping um is this going to give me a permanent answer a permanent solution because that's what we we really want we want like a permanent solution we don't just want like going from hopping from scrap to nothing to nothing to nothing mm -hmm. you know and yeah we just it's it said i think i just read um all pleasure comes from doing god's will so it's like we really want to go back in the mind get to this lack solve that and then and then it's like whatever the world seems to show up as after that, it doesn't matter because it's like 
we feel we feel complete and that's what all we really want is that feeling of completion and then whatever shows up in the world after that it really doesn't matter but that's a reversal before it was like what shows up in the world matters to my mind because that's my happiness but then you get into what shows up in the world doesn't matter because i'm already complete Mm. in my mind so we want to make that switch Mm. right the ego is always trying to you know shift the content or the purpose to keep the form while the spirits like no let's go for healing let's keep that purpose and we'll keep shifting the form to support that purpose Mm -hmm. and there was actually a section like as you're speaking i was like oh this part there's a section from a course in miracles workbook lesson 200 and there's just two paragraphs from it that well i'll see if i read both but i like the first paragraph at least (laughs) which says this is the final point to which each one must come at last to lay aside all hope of finding happiness where there is none of being saved by what can only hurt of making peace of chaos, joy of pain and heaven out of hell attempt no more to win through losing nor to die to live. You cannot but be asking for defeat. Yet, you can, you can ask as easily for love, for happiness, and for eternal life in peace that has no ending. Ask for this, and you can only win. <laughs> it's great. Jesus just using even these winning and losing metaphors to reach the mind where it's at. <clears throat> to ask for what you have already must succeed. To ask that what is false be true can only fail. Forgive yourself for vain imaginings and seek no longer what you cannot find. For what could be more foolish than to seek and seek and seek again for hell? when you have but to look with open eyes to find that heaven lies before you through a door that opens easily to welcome you. Come home. You have not found your happiness in foreign places and in alien forms that have no meaning to you, though you sought to make them meaningful. Hmm. yeah i think there's actually like there is a fear in the mind to see that deception that that actually there might not be any thing lacking Mm. there is a (laughs) Right, we both had that insight yesterday. <laughs> yeah, there, there is a fear around that. And um, yeah, in the first section that I was reading, Illusion of Needs, um, it does talk about fear as well, which, which might be good to read. So. so it says, this is a uh, Illusion of Needs, and this is paragraph four. The real purpose of this world is to use it to correct your unbelief. You can never control the effects of fear yourself. The effects of fear yourself you cannot control because you made fear and you believe in what you made. In attitude then, though not in content, you resemble your creator who has perfect faith in his creations because he created them. Belief produces the acceptance of existence. That is why you can believe what no one else thinks is true. It is true for you because it was made by you. And um, then it says, all aspects of fear are untrue because they do not exist at the creative level and therefore do not exist at all. To whatever extent you are willing to submit your beliefs to this test, to that extent are your perceptions corrected. In sorting out the false from the true, 
the miracle proceeds along these lines. Perfect love casts out fear. <laughs> if fear exists, then there is not perfect love. But only perfect love exists. If there is fear, it produces a state that does not exist. <laughs> Believe this and you will be free. Only God can establish the solution, and this faith is his gift. I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, but it's like it's all kind of mixed together, but we were just sharing our insights about all this for us. And and I was, uh, <clears throat> I think it was actually two mornings ago, I woke up feeling this real sense of like lack or insecurity. Uh, it was just, it seemed like all the other guys here, just somehow being around them was just flushing up like basically these feelings of unworthiness in myself like oh I don't look as good or I don't know or I'm not as strong or I'm not as clear or still there was just all these things that came up and so I decided to go over to one of the rooms in this house our, our library and, and I just I, I just paused and I thought I'd listen to some music and I heard in my mind open the Spiri app and and do a uh, instrument for peace. And so as I did it, as I was moving through all that uh, in my instrument for peace uh, session, I was just seeing how, as I was getting towards the end of it, I had this insight of like, huh, I almost feel like, like I'm afraid to be like happy. Cause then if I'm happy, it means whatever I think I want, like I don't actually need. And I was like afraid to lose that. I could actually see, I could actually see like, I, but I think I really want this, even though it's not supporting, you know, I could see like the split mind. And, and I think you said you had seen like a similar thing. Yeah. It's like, it's this, there's this insane belief that if I let go of, if I let go of this ego, it's like there's going to be enormous sacrifice. And it's really the ego's feeling of sacrifice. It's the ego's feeling of loss, of loss of its thought system. And um, there's one sentence on a read about sacrifice <laughs> right here. Chapter 15, the holy instant. And it's the section Christmas as the end of sacrifice, the very first line. Fear not to recognize the whole idea of sacrifice as solely of your making. <laughs> okay, see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. End it. Cut. <laughs> but um Yeah, we have we have one minute left, but um <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That's just I don't know if there's much to say about that really. But, yeah, well, see you guys uh, next week on Modern Mystics. I think next Sunday uh, we'll announce a time. Just stay tuned to me and Nicholas's Facebook pages. And thank you guys so much. Love you. Yeah, and I pray that we're all showing that there is no sacrifice. Yeah. Thank you.